us. I praise and thank you for the moving of the Spirit among us today, for what you have spoken to our hearts, what we are believing you for, the revival that we're all seeking you for. We give you the praise and the glory. And Father, as I stand before this congregation tonight, once again, I acknowledge that in myself, I am nothing. Without you, I can do nothing. Therefore, I'm asking for the next few minutes of time that you would grant unto me, your servant, the ability to speak the message that you have put upon my heart. Again, may the Holy Spirit go before us. Prepare each and every one of our hearts that we would receive with understanding what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour. I ask that your divine will be done. We ask it in Jesus' name, and we'll be sure and careful to give you the praise and the glory for it. Amen. Psalm 62, verse 11, and it says, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. I ask you to pause with me for a moment. I want to reread that portion to you. God has spoken once. Twice I have heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Now, if you'll come with me to Zephaniah. I want to read verses seven, Zephaniah chapter 3, and I want to read verse 17. Zephaniah 3, 17, and the word says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy, he will rest in his love, he will joy over you with singing. Again, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. God wants us to know that he is the mighty God. Besides him, there is no other. He is all might, all power, and all authority. And he wants us, his children, to know and understand that. There's nothing impossible with God. So I want to speak a few moments to you tonight on the power of God. Power means possession of control. He's in possession of control of everything, everything. Authority, a person in command. When the Bible talks about he being all authority, he, again, is in command. No higher power, he is in command. Regardless of what man may think or say, God is still in total control. I know that we're living in a day and age where man thinks that he's taking it all over. He's all might, he's all power, he can do anything he wants to do, he can accomplish anything he tries. They leave God out of the equation, right? So God wants us to remember, no matter what men think, no matter what other people say, God's in control. He has the final say. I have said many times when we get a report from a doctor, somebody comes in the, our church family, gets a report from the doctor, and of course they're all upset and they come and they share it and we pray over them. I always remind them, you've heard what the doctor says, but we know what God says. God always has the final answer. He's always has the final answer. He's always in total control. He is all might, all power, and all authority. I think sometimes that we get so caught up in our problems, we get so worried over what's going to happen, and we start looking at ourselves, how am I going to do this? How can I handle this? What's going to happen now? And we forget what the Lord has told us. I shared with you one time that most of the time we don't really hear what God says. And I gave you an example. I reminded you when Jesus said to the disciples, he had been 
preaching and teaching all day. He had been healing the sick. It's coming toward evening time and Jesus is just tired. He's tired. So he said to the disciples, get in the boat. We're going to go to the other side. You get in the boat and I'll dismiss the crowd. They got in the boat. When Jesus got on the boat, he went down below and went to sleep. Remember, he was exhausted. In the meantime, a great storm comes up. The water starts coming over the sides of the boat. The disciples, so I can just see them trying to bail it out. Finally, they get so afraid of what's happened, afraid they're going to drown. One of them ran to Jesus and shook him and said, Master, don't you care that we're perishing? Jesus got up. He stood up, stuck his hand out over the feet and said, Peace, be still. And immediately the storm stopped and the water calmed down. And then Jesus said to them, O you of little faith. You remember that? What happened to the disciples? In the midst of the storm, in the fear of the fact that they were going to drown, the boat was going to sink, they forgot what Jesus said. What did he say? We're going over to the other side. Whatever he says, he does. He wasn't worried about the storm. He was taking them over to the other side. And I think we're that same way many times. We, we read our Bibles. We hear what God says. We listen to the words that are being spoken or preached. Sometimes God speaks a, a personal word to you. But when the problems come, when trouble comes, when fear get, grips us, sometimes we forget what God said. Fear takes over and we forget who we're trusting in. So, so think about it with me. Regardless of what man may say or think, Jesus is in total control of our lives, in total control of our lives. Again, he's all might, all power, and all authority. Nothing that he cannot do. There's nothing ever going to happen in your life or mine that he cannot handle, that he cannot take care of for us. Okay. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, and I want to read verse 1 and 2, if you will. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the surface of the water. I want to remind us again tonight that we just... Don't get so caught up in other things or don't get so busy and forget God. I want us to remind us who created heaven and earth? Who created this world that we live in? God did. Who's in control of this world? God is. Again, doesn't matter what man says, what man does, God's in control. God raises up men, he takes them down. He can do anything that has to be done. He's God. He wants us to understand tonight. It's been strongly put upon me. God wants each of us to understand. He is in control. He's the Lord, our God. We belong to him. We, the believer, belong to him. And there's nothing can happen to us, nothing can be done to us. It has to go through him first. He has to give permission before bad things or anything can happen to us. He's in control. We are his children. Okay. I ask you to look at what God has done for his people. Remember when Israel was in Egypt? 430 years. Slaves in Egypt. When God said, I'm going to bring them back, God spoke to Abraham, told him they were going to be in, in Egypt of slaves. But he also told, and I wonder how many of us 
We know we've read it. How many of us re remember what God said? He told Abraham, I'm going to bring them back out. And I'm going to bring them back out with the spoils of Egypt. The Egyptians forced them into forced labor. They didn't feed, uh, pay them at all. They just barely fed them. God said, I'm going to spoil Egypt. You read it. So when they got, God got ready to bring them out, what did he do? He told them, go borrow from your neighbors. Borrow, borrow silver, buy, borrow gold, buy, borrow fine linen, all of these things. And they came out very wealthy. God paid them for those 430 years of slavery. But before it ever happened, he told Abraham he was going to do it. We can trust God, folks. Doesn't matter how long it is. Their case, 430 years. Abraham's case, when he was first promised, the, the God promised he was going to give him a son. 25 years before that promise was fulfilled. God never forgot it. But in God's time, he provided. And he always does that. I've told you many times, someone tonight is worrying about something. And God is saying to you, he knows all about it. He hasn't forgotten it. It's been promised to you. He hasn't forgotten it. And in the fullness of God's time, he's going to do it. He's going to bring it to pass. Okay. But pastor, it's been so long. Remember, one day is but a thousand years with God. May seem like a long time with us, but not with him. So God is saying to you tonight, He's going to give you the answer to that prayer. Okay. Again, I want to remind you what God did to Israel in Egypt. I want to remind you what God did when they came out of Egypt and come up against an un impossible circumstance for them. Standing at the Red Sea. Egyptians pushing hard behind them to, to take them back. They can't go across. They can't get around. It's impossible. Nothing's impossible with God. I love the way God did this. He parted the waters. The water stood up on edge on both sides. Remember, the children of Israel went over on dry land. He, he told Moses... He said, I'm going to work all of my powers against Egypt. And I'm going to show them. What happened? Parted the waters. Then when the Israel was up, the last Israelite stepped onto the opposite shore, Egypt was following close and they were in about the middle of the sea. God caused the waters to come back together. He, he made this statement before he did it. He said, Though these Egyptians that you have seen today, them you will see no more. What happened? When God brought the waters together, the chariots, the horses, the horsemen, and Pharaoh drowned in the, in the water. When the, Israel looked back, they saw dead bodies floating on the water. God fought the battle for them. He always does if we give him that opportunity. So I ask you to, to think about them. Think about Egypt. I ask you to think about the promised land. God promised Abraham that land. And now we know it's 430 years before they saw it fulfilled. But God led them into the promised land like he said he would. And then I ask you to think also of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a godly king. He served God. He obeyed God. One day the king of Assyria says he's coming up against Judah. He says he's going to make it a dust heap. He's going to destroy it. Hezekiah went up and started praying and crying out to the Lord. He sent for Isaiah the prophet, had him praying. God gave him a dream to, to, Hezekiah, or to Isaiah, tell him that they will not shoot one arrow against this city, not one. That 
king had to go away for a while. He told him he's coming back. He haven't forgot you. I'm coming back. He sent a letter to Hezekiah. I want to show you something, folks. This is a letter that God sent to us. A letter God sent to us. He's, he told us in that letter who he is. He told us in this letter what he does, what he can do, what he will do. He's made many promises to us in this letter. And he feel, fulfills every one of them. When Hezekiah got the letter, he went into the temple, he spread it out before the Lord, and then he read it to the Lord and prayed and sought God. Okay. What did God do? That night, the death angel went through the Assyrian camp and 185,000 soldiers died that night. The rest of them woke up in the morning, there's dead bodies all around them. Shows us God's in control. Man can't sell what he's going to do. He can't boast himself against God. God's in control. He proved it to Hezekiah and to Judah. So think about it. Deliverance and healing. All the times God has delivered, even today, God's delivering people from sickness, from disease, from problems, from circumstances. God is healing people still in the healing business. He never quit, even though there's many people that say, oh, I don't believe in healing. It wasn't for us today. I don't know how many times I've heard that the last disciple that died, the last apostle that died, that ended the gifts of the Spirit. That ended healing, et cetera, et cetera. Folks, I don't know how many times I've read my Bible through. Many times. But a funny thing is, I've heard people say that many times, but I've never read it in the Bible. Never read it. But I have read this. I am the Lord thy God that healeth all thy diseases. That's the word of God. I've heard this. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. He knows all about us. He knows all about our needs. And he tells us, call unto me. That's just like saying it like this. Come talk to me. Come talk to me. Tell me what you need. Tell me what you want. Tell me what you're thinking. Well, perhaps he's God. He already knows it. Yes, he already knows it. But he wants to hear it from you. Do we trust him enough to ask him? God wants to hear it. I tell you, you cannot read through the Old Testament without seeing the power and the glory of God. Over and over and over in the Old Testament, God is showing himself as creator God Almighty, and is no respecter of person. Think about it. And in the New Testament, he's doing the same thing. In our day and age, he's doing the same thing. I'm so glad to stand here before you tonight and say, I know the healing power of God personally. I know the saving power and authority of God personally. I've had some wonderful experiences with the Lord. I've had miracle answers. My wife, my family. He's the same folk, just like he said he would. For every one of us here tonight, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the thing that I love about God, he's not shy about showing himself. Showing who he is, what he can do, and what he's going to do for us. He tells us. He wants us to know it. So we see the power and the glory of God in Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus displays his power and authority throughout the four Gospels. 
He displays it. He shows it to us. Power. Okay. Power over sickness, disease. Power over the wind and the sea. Power over life and death. We can find it all in the four Gospels. All about Jesus. And the beautiful, he said, thing. It's available to every one of us. It takes a while for you to get a hold of that. It takes reading over and over, getting the word out of here, down into here, letting him speak. What are you talking about, Pastor? Okay, what did I say? He's, he's the power and glory of God, Jesus is. He wants you to read about him in the four Gospels. He wants us to read it over and over and over until we really get it in our heart. There's a purpose that he wants us to do that. You'll find it, and you've heard your pastor talk about it many times. John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 12. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The works that I do shall you do, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go to the Father. He wants us to know and understand that and become involved in it. He said we'll do it. He gives us the power and authority to do it. And he wants us to do it. The church will grow. When I say church, I mean the whole church. If we begin to obey him, if we begin to step out in faith and do what he says, church, he wouldn't tell us we could do it if we couldn't do it. He wants us to do it. Okay. Think about it. Power over Satan, power over demons. Over and over we find Jesus casting out demons, setting people free. You can do it as well. We have done it. Power over sickness and disease, power over the wind, the sea, the water. It's Something of what the Lord has spoken to us. After all of the rain that we've had, not just in California, but all over the nation, the rain, the damage, the flooding, the shaking, that the Lord is telling us. He's all might, all power. We don't have to fear, folks. He's going to take care of us. He's going to take care of us. He's going to meet every need. The greatest thing for every one of us tonight he has power to forgive our sins. Totally cleanse us and forget. We are children of God. He came to set the sinners free. I'm, I'm so glad that I can say tonight, I'm free. I'm free. Jesus set me free. And why am I saying I'm free? Because my Bible says this, for each and every one of us that have saved, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. No more past. He's buried it. See? Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18. Just a moment. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power. That means we don't have to worry about anything. He has it all. Okay. Somebody might say, but what about Satan? We say Jesus has all power. There's so many that says the devil did this, the devil done that. What about Satan? I want you to think about something. I'm only going to say two things about Satan tonight. I'm only going to say two things. And that they are right out of the Bible. Right out of the Word of God. Let's look at Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 17. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? 
verse 13. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above all heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake nations, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? Who is he talking about? Satan. Satan. God took care of him. Still does. He, the second thing that I want to say about him, you'll find it in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 18 to 20. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall separate you, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay. 18 through 20, please. 18 through 20. It'll be up in just a moment. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. We don't worry about Satan. That's what the Bible tells us about him. But what we need to be doing is rejoicing praising and worshiping God and thanking God that our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We don't have to worry about anything else again. Against a child of God, Satan has no power or authority. He has been defeated, victor over death, hell. Jesus is victor over death, hell, and the grave. I ask you, let me share something with you. In the Old Testament, in the old days, when nation went to war against nation, the winning nation would take their leader, they'd take all of his armament, they'd take all of his weapons, and then they would put him in front of their horses and make him go through the city, his own city, and then bring him through their city pushing them in front of him, letting them see him defeated, making him ashamed. That's how they treated them, if they didn't kill them first. Okay. So think of it, how embarrassing it must have been when Jesus rose, victor over death, hell, and the grave. All of those, all the demons, all the sinning people saw Jesus as victor. How ashamed. All Satan stripped of all power, all authority. Did you hear what I said? Satan stripped of all power, all authority. He has no power or authority over any child of God. We don't have to fear him or worry about him. He's been stripped of all power. He tries to run a bluff on us. But we, have, we need to understand, the Bible said, the, the devil like a roaring lion, look about, seeking whom he may devour. He can't do it unless we allow him. He can do nothing to us unless we allow him. Many times we've got to get those thoughts out of our head. How do we do it? I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Get behind me. Can we do that? Jesus gave us that authority. 
he gave us that authority. Against the child of God, Satan has no power or authority. He has been defeated. Okay? That power and authority has been taken away from him. Satan's power is never again. It's gone. Okay? Jesus, what about today? What about right now? Jesus gave us the power and authority over Satan, sickness, disease. Let's take a look at Luke's Gospel, chapter 10 and verse 19. Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 19. Notwithstanding, in this, pardon me, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, on scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Let me just reread that to you for a moment this evening. And I want you to listen to what the Lord has said. Who is he talking? He's talking to us believers. Behold. Remember what that word behold means. Look. Look. See what you're seeing and hearing. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, on scorpions, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we have that power and authority. So we need to stop letting Satan push us around. He's running above. He's a liar and the father of them. We need to ask ourselves when these temptations come against us, when these thoughts come, we need to ask ourselves, who am I going to believe? Am I going to believe Satan and do what he wants? Or am I going to believe the word of God? He's given us that authority to do it. He, Jesus, is all might, all power and authority. So next we need to ask ourselves this question in closing. God has told us who he is. He's told us what he will do, what he has done. Jesus tells us what he's going to do for us as he is our Lord and Savior. So my question is, if God be for us, who can stand against us? I didn't make that up, folks. It's right out of the Word of God. It's the Bible. If God be for us, who can stand against us? Where? Where are we? And our faith. Do we believe it all? Have we come to the place where we don't fear Satan anymore? We know that he can't harm us. He can't make us do anything. God gives us that free will. So let's rejoice. Let's be grateful for what God has done for us, what he's going to do for us, and how he's going to lead us. Every day, every day is a new day. And we don't know what this day is going to bring forth. Before you get out of bed in the morning, take just a few minutes. Now, this is before you even get out of bed. Take a few minutes and talk to him. Lord, I want to serve you today. I want to live my life for you. I ask you, Deliver me from Satan today. Guide and direct my life. Just let him know you love him, you want to serve him, and you want him to deliver you from Satan. What happens? He hears us. He hears us. And he gives us the strength, the power, and the thought we need for today. Okay. I ask him. Every morning I ask him. Lord, Give me the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding that I need for today. You already know all about this day. I don't. So I'm asking you to give me the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, the guidance that I need for today. Father, tonight again I thank and praise you for the privilege of preaching your gospel. I thank you for the message that you've given to me. And I'm asking tonight, Father, that this message will minister to the heart of your people, that your divine will will be accomplished 
in every one of our hearts. Right now, you already know what's going on in every one of our lives. You know some of the thoughts that are troubling individuals. I'm asking, Lord, that they would receive the word that's been spoken to them. Trust them and thank you for their deliverance. I ask it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Would you stand with me tonight? I want to remind.